Want one of every Magic card? Well, you can get them from our sponsor, Card Kingdom, by heading over to CardKingdom.com. Hello, everyone. It's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive. And we got a fun one today. Lately, I've kind of been thinking about 2020 and the year that 2020 has been in Magic. And I think the biggest theme of the year has been more magic, essentially. Not only an increase in the number of products, with like 28 secret layers, a ton of supplemental sets, nine commander decks, all the standard stuff, but a big increase in the cards itself. Like, how many different versions of each card there are? Like, right now, we're looking at Teferi Master of Time, which is kind of an extreme example, but only counting English printings, there are 21 different Teferi Master of Times that were printed this year, which is absolutely insane. That's more Teferi Master of Times in 2020 than Grizzly Bear versions in the entire history of Magic. So, uh, this got me wondering... How much would it cost if I wanted to own one copy of every version of every card printed in 2020? So to set some parameters here, what this means is I want to own all 21 Teferi Master of Times, all the promo versions, the extended border versions, in foil and in non-foil, the pre-release foil, the promo pack version, all of that stuff. Every single possible version, only for English cards, though. You would uh, multiply this by, I don't know, four or five, some big number, if you were also including all the different languages of the card. But we're focused just on English. So let's say you are the ultimate magic collector. You want a single copy of every single card printed in 2020. How much money are you going to have to spend? That is our topic for today, so let's break it down. So let's start with an easy one. We had four standard sets in 2020. We had Theros Beyond Death. We had Ikoria, Corset 2021, Zendikar Rising. So for these sets, you need to have one of each set version of the card in foil and in non-foil. Traditionally, that's all you would need if you wanted everything, but 2020, we saw a huge proliferation versions of cards, so you're going to need way, way more than that. Take Brokos Apex of Forever, for example. To get all the versions of Brokos, you're going to need the set version, both in foil and non-foil. You're going to need the comic book style showcase promo in foil and non-foil. You're going to need the Godzilla promo in foil and non-foil. So it's actually a lot of Brokoses that you need. And also, every standard set has a bunch of promos that are given away at pre-releases. So going back to the Uro from Theros Beyond Death, Brokos, Teferi, Omneth, each of those cards also has the stamped pre-release version. When you add all that up, the non-foil and foil set versions, all the promo versions in foil and non-foil, all the pre-release promos that come in foil, that is going to cost you $8,547 to get one copy of every version of every card from those four big standard sets. So that's already a pretty big number, over $8,000, but that's not all. Those are just the standard sets. We also got five major supplemental sets this year. We got Mystery Boosters, we got Unsanctioned, we got Double Masters, we got Jumpstart, we got Commander Legends. So just to get one normal version of all the cards in those sets, one foil copy, one non-foil copy, those five sets by themselves, because uh, like Mystery Boosters had a ton of cards in it, that's going to cost you another $7,344, and that's not all both Double Masters and Commander Legends also had like Masterpiece style promos. We had the Masterpiece Planeswalkers and so forth that came with Double Masters. We had Extended Border and also etched foils that came with Commander Legends. Getting all the promos from Commander Legends and Double Masters going to be another $6,301. So that's already a big chunk of money. You're already closing in on over $20,000. But then we also have a bunch of what I would say is miscellaneous promo printings or weird stuff. Like we had Zendikar Rising Expeditions, which were unique to Zendikar Rising. We had the list from Zendikar Rising set boosters, which had some really expensive cards like that Renin 6. We had the promo Planeswalker stained glass versions that came with some secret lair drops. We had a bunch of judge foils to get all the weird random extra stuff. That's another $7,617. And that 
is just for booster based products. Then, if you keep moving on, we got Secret Layer Drops X28, I believe. And for Secret Layer Drops, rather than counting the cost of buying singles, for the most part, we're gonna just gonna go with the drop price because you can buy them easily 30, 40, 60, whatever amount of dollars. But getting all 28 Secret Layers, that's gonna be another $1,480. Then we got nine Commander Precon decks at 20 ish dollars a piece. That's another 180. We got five Planeswalker decks that came with Corset 2021. That's another $50. We had Commander Collection Green, both in foil and non-foil, to get one of each. That's going to cost you another $280-ish. And then finally, Signature Spellbook Chadra, another $15 to get a copy of that. And when you mash all of that together, that adds up to the ridiculously, shockingly big number, $31,000. $804 to get one of everything from just the year of 2020. That's one year worth of all the cardboard you could ever want. Like the ultimate magic collector, but just for a single year, $31,804, which is absolutely insane. And that got me thinking, like, what if you actually had $31,804? What else could you spend it on? Like, are there better options available than all the cardboard released in the multiverse for just the past year? And uh, there are a lot of other options available. Like, doing a little bit of research, I found airplanes you could buy for less than that. I found four-bedroom houses you could buy for less than that. If you keep it to the magic world, you could buy a playset of every single set legal in Pioneer. That's four copies of every single card in the format and probably some duplicates because of reprints and core sets and stuff for less money than every card printed in 2020. In fact, you could buy a copy of every set legal in modern or think of it this way. Let's say you started with our most recent set, Zendikar Rising, and you wanted to just buy complete sets of standard sets, not supplemental products, not master sets, just standard sets, and go back through Magic's history, you would make it all the way back to Visions, released February 1997, before you ran out of your $31,804. So you could buy every standard set printed between Visions in 1997 and Zendikar Rising, or you could buy one copy of every card printed in 2020. Like, that is pretty shocking. 25 years worth of every standard set in Magic, almost, or one year's worth of every card. Someone recently calculated that on Steam, if you wanted to buy every single game with all the downloadable content, it would be $522,000. And uh, that includes over 30,000 games, which would mean the average price of a Steam game with all the downloadable content is $70.40. That means for the same price as one year of every Magic card, you could buy over 17,000 Steam games at that average price. Uh, let's say you played those games for 40 hours each an average of two hours a day after work, after school, it would take you your lifetime. Actually, you wouldn't even get to the last games on the list in your lifetime. You would run out of time. You could play two hours a day for the rest of your life, 40 hours a game, and not complete every single game for the same cost as one year of Magic Hearts. Or even if you say, okay, like Steam, sure, it's got some low quality, like homemade games. What if we just stick to triple A titles? It's $60 a piece. You could get 500 of them. I don't think I know anyone that owns 500 you know ps4 ps5 xbox one whatever pc games that are triple a titles that's a lifetime supply of console games or pc games triple a or board games even let's say the average price of a board game a little bit of variance here it's hard to tell because board games don't have a set price as much as video games let's say 40 dollars a piece uh, 40 dollars a piece you could buy a room full of board games 750 board games for the same price is one year of every piece of cardboard released in magic the gathering so that's a big number $31,804. And I should make it clear that in some ways this is a silly for fun exercise because no one outside of maybe Krim needs 21 versions of Teferi. No one outside of the most insanest of Magic collectors needs one version of every card that was printed during the year. So this is more just for fun and also to kind of exemplify just how many cards and products were released in the past year. So this isn't saying that that's what it costs to play Magic. This is what it would cost if you wanted to be the craziest collector available and own one of everything. So this isn't the cost to actually play the game, but it does show 
just how much products and how many different versions of cards were released in just a single year and how many other things you could get for that money? It's probably a good thing that no one needs every version of every card printed in 2020 because when you're comparing it to houses and cars or 500 AAA games or 1,700 Steam games or every standard set released between Visions and Zendikar Rising, there's a lot of other things you could spend your money on compared to 21 Teferis and a million different versions of all the cards printed in 2020. So that is how much it would cost to buy one copy of every version of every magic card printed in English in 2020. And that's been our video for today. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.